Jasper the jasper had great repute in ancient times as a rain-bringer, and the fourth-century author of Lithica celebrates this quality in the following lines. The gods propitious hearken to his prayers, who e'er the polished grass-green jasper wears. His parched glebe they'll satiate with rain, and sent for showers to soak the thirsty plain. Evidently, the green hue of this translucent stone suggested its association with the verdure of the fields in an even closer degree than was the case with transparent green stones such as the emerald, etc. Another early authority, Demigeron, mentions this belief and states that only when properly consecrated would the jasper do service in this way. Jasper was also credited in the fourth century with the virtue of driving away evil spirits and protecting those who wore it from the bites of venomous creatures. An anonymous German author of the eleventh or twelfth century recommends the use of this stone for the cure of snake bites, and states that if it be placed upon the bitten part, the matter will come out of the wound. Here, the cure is operated not by the absorbent quality of the stone, but by its supposed power to attract poison or venom to itself, thus removing the cause of disease. A popular etymology of the Greek and Latin name for jasper is reported by Bartholomeus Anglicus, who writes that, in the head of an adder, that heat aspis is found a little stone that is called jaspis. The same authority pronounces this stone to be of wonder virtue, and says that it hath as many virtues as diverse colors and veins. This is fully in accord with tradition, for, as color was at least as important as chemical composition in determining the talismanic or therapeutic worth of the different stones, the great variety of colors and markings in the different jaspers naturally indicated their use in many different ways. Jet Jet has been found among the Paleolithic remains in the caves of the Kesserlach near Thengen, Canton Schaffhausen, Switzerland. The material was evidently derived from the deposits in Württemberg and was shaped by flint chips. Quite possibly jet, as well as amber, was already regarded as possessing a certain talismanic virtue. Such ornaments, when worn, were believed to become a part of the very body and soul of the wearer, and were therefore to be guarded with jealous care. In the Paleolithic cave deposits of Belgium also jet appears, the supply being in this instance derived from northern Lorraine. The fragments had been rounded and pierced through the center. This indicates their use as parts of a necklace or as pendants. Necklaces, bracelets, and rings were especially favored for the wearing of talismanic gems, since the stones could easily be so set that they would come in direct contact with the skin. Jet was one of the materials used by the Pueblo Indians for their amulets. An exceptionally well-executed figure of a frog made of this material was found in Pueblo Bonito in 1896 by Mr. Pepper. The representation is much more realistic than is the case in the other figures of this type from this region. Turquoise eyes have been inserted in the head of the figure, and a band of turquoise surrounds the neck. Lapis Lazuli both in Babylonia and in Egypt, lapis lazuli was very highly valued, and this is shown by the use of its Assyrian name, Uknu, in poetic metaphor. Thus, in a hymn to the moon god Sin, he is addressed as the strong bull, great of horns, perfect in form, with long flowing beard, bright as lapis lazuli. This may remind us of the hyacinthine locks of classical literature. Lapis lazuli, a blue stone with little golden spots, was a cure for melancholy and for the quatern fever, an intermittent fever returning each third day or each fourth day, counting in the previous attack. Lodestone. We have the authority of Plato, Ion 533d, for the statement that the word magnetus was first applied to the lodestone by the tragic poet Euripides, 480 to 405 BC, the more usual name being the Heraculean Stone. These designations refer to two places in Lydia, Magnesia, and Heraclea, where the mineral was found. 
Pliny states, on the authority of Nicander, that a certain Magnes, a shepherd, discovered the mineral on Mount Ida while pasturing his flock, because the nails of his shoes clung to a piece of it. We are told by Pliny that Ptolemy Philadelphus, 309 to 247 BC, planning to erect a temple in honor of his sister and wife Arsinoe, called in the aid of Chirocrates, an Alexandrian architect. The latter engaged to place therein an iron statue of Arsinoe, which should appear to hang in mid-air without support. However, both the Egyptian king and his architect died before the design could be realized. This story of an image held in suspense by means of powerful magnets set in the floor and roof, and sometimes also in the walls of a temple, is repeated in a variety of forms by early writers. Of course there was no real foundation for such tales, as the thing is altogether impracticable. The Roman poet Claudian, 5th century A.D., relates that the priests of a certain temple, in order to offer a dramatic spectacle to the eyes of the worshippers, caused two statues to be executed, one of Mars in iron and another of Venus in lodestone. At a special festival these statues were placed near to each other, and the lodestone drew the iron to itself. Claudian vividly describes this. The priests prepare a marriage feast, behold a marvel, instant to her arms, her eager husband Cytheria charms, and ever mindful of her ancient fires, with amorous breath his martial breast inspires, lifts the loved weight, close round his helmet twines, her loving arms and close embraces joins, drawn by the mystic influence from afar, flies to the wedded gem, the god of war, the magnet weds the steel, the sacred rites, nature attends, and the heavenly pair unites. There was current as early as the fourth century a curious belief that a piece of lodestone, if placed beneath the pillow of a sleeping wife, would act as a touchstone of her virtue. This first appears in the Alexandrian poem Lithica, and it has thus been quaintly Englished by a fourteenth-century translator. Also Magnes is in like wise as Adamus. If it be set under the head of a chaste wife, it maketh her suddenly to be clip, embrace her husband, and if she be a spouse breaker, she shall move her out of the bed suddenly by dread of fantasy. The same writer attempts an explanation of the popular fancy that when powdered lodestone was thrown upon coals in the four corners of a house, the inmates would feel as though the house were falling down. Of this he says, That seeming is by moving that cometh by tornage of the brain. In classical writings, the fascination exercised by a very beautiful woman is sometimes likened to the attractive power of the lodestone, as notably by Lucian, who says that if such a woman looks at a man, she draws him to her, and leads him whither she will, just as the lodestone draws the iron. To the same idea is probably due the fact that in several languages the name given to the lodestone indicates that its peculiar power was conceived to be a manifestation of the sympathy or love of one mineral substance for another. This is commonly believed to be the sense in which we should understand the French designation aimant, namely as the participle of the verb aimer, to love. However, some etymologists prefer to derive the word from Adamas, sometimes used in low Latin for the lodestone, although properly signifying the diamond. It is certainly worthy of note that in two such dissimilar languages as Sanskrit and Chinese, the influence of this idea appears in the names given to the lodestone. In Sanskrit, the word is chombaka, or the kisser, and in Chinese, tsushi, or the loving stone. Chin Tseng Ki, a Chinese author of the 8th century, wrote that the lodestone attracts iron just as does a tender mother when she calls her children to her. A rich growth of Mohammedan legends grew up about the exploits of Alexander the Great. 
a striking example being given on another page, and in one of them it is related that the Greek world conqueror provided his soldiers with lodestones as a defense against the wiles of the jinns or evil spirits, the lodestone as well as magnetized iron being regarded as a sure defense against enchantments and all the machinations of malignant spirits in the east indies it is said that a king should have a seat of lodestone at his coronation probably because the magnetic influence of the stone was supposed to attract power favor and gifts to the sovereign but it is not only in the orient that magnetite is prized for its talismanic powers for even in some parts of our own land this belief is still prevalent large quantities of lodestone are found at magnet cove arkansas and it is estimated that from one to three tons are sold annually to the negroes to be used in the voodoo ceremonies as conjuring stones the material has been found in land used for farming purposes and many pieces have been turned up in ploughing for corn these vary from the size of a pea to masses weighing from ten to twenty pounds they occur in a reddish brown sticky soil their surface is smooth and brown and they have the appearance of water-worn pebbles. In July 1887, an interesting case was tried in Macon, Georgia, where a Negro woman sued a conjurer to recover five dollars, which she had paid him for a piece of the lodestone, to serve as a charm to bring back her wandering husband. As the market value of this mineral was only seventy-five cents a pound, and the piece was very small, weighing but a few ounces, the judge ordered that the money should be refunded. Malachite For some reason not easy to fathom, malachite was considered to be a talisman peculiarly appropriate for children. If a piece of this stone were attached to an infant's cradle, all evil spirits were held aloof and the child slept soundly and peacefully. In some parts of Germany, malachite shared with turquoise the repute of protecting the wearer from danger in falling, and it also gave warning of approaching disaster by breaking into several pieces. This material was well known to the ancient Egyptians, malachite mines having been worked between Suez and Sinai as early as 4000 BC. The appropriate design to be engraved upon malachite was the image of the sun. Such a gem became a powerful talisman and protected the wearer from enchantments, from evil spirits, and from the attacks of venomous creatures. The sun, as the source of all light, was generally regarded as the deadly enemy of necromancers, witches, and demons, who delighted in the darkness and feared nothing more than the bright light of day. Moonstone the moonstone is believed to bring good fortune and is regarded as a sacred stone in India. It is never displayed for sale there, except on a yellow cloth, as yellow is an especially sacred color. As a gift for lovers, the moonstone takes a high rank, for it is believed to arouse the tender passion and to give lovers the power to read in the future the fortune, good or ill, that is in store for them. To gain this knowledge, however, the stone must be placed in the mouth while the moon is full. Antoine Mizog tells us of a selenite or moonstone owned by a friend of his, a great traveler. This stone, about the size of the gold piece known as the gold noble, but somewhat thicker, indicated the waxing and waning of the moon by a certain white point or mark, which grew larger or smaller as did the moon. Mizod relates that to convince himself of the truth of this, he obtained possession of the stone for one lunar month, during which time he sedulously observed it. The white mark first appeared at the top. It was like a small millet seed, increasing in size and moving down on the stone, always assuming the form of the moon, until, on reaching the middle, it was round like the full moon. Then the mark gradually passed up again as the moon diminished. The owner declared that he had vowed and dedicated this stone to the young king, Edward the Sixth, who was then highly esteemed because he had good judgment in regard to rare and precious things. Onyx. The onyx, if worn on the neck, was said to cool the ardors of love, and Cardano relates that everywhere in India the stone was worn for this purpose. 
This belief is closely related to the idea commonly associated with the onyx, namely that it provoked discord and separated lovers. The close union and yet the strange contrast between the layers of black and white may have suggested this.